kurang ajar <laughs> Yeah, hello, welcome to MI Fest 2020, everyone. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, guys.
Hello everyone. Welcome to UMI Fest 2020. Are you guys ready for UMI Fest? <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are ready. Okay. So guys, how are you today? Are you good? I'm fine. It's okay. Okay, maybe um, you guys wanted to introduce yourself. Um, it's okay for anyone. Maybe um, Kylie from, where are you from, Kylie? Like I am, I'm from Vietnam. Ah, uh, from Vietnam. Yeah. So yeah. Kyle is Kyle. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Kyle. Oh, it's not Kylie. No. Uh, yeah, it is Kyle. Actually, my pet Kyle. name. Kyle. Key. Oh, so, okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I have named Kyle. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Abdullah Al Mamun. Hello. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm Mamun from Bangladesh. Hey, Bangladesh. Hey. Yes. Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Thank you. So now it's for a girl. Um, Tui Duing. Tui Dung. Oh, it's Tui Yung. Tui Duing. Tui Dung. Yung. Yung. Ah, okay. okay. Yes. Oh, uh, you can call me Julia. Okay, Julia. Yes, uh, hi everyone. Um, I'm Thuy Yung or Julia I'm from Vietnam. Okay, that's cool. Okay, if you guys ready for the workshop now, time, um, I will give to the moderator or MC. Imas, the place is Hi yours. everyone, hi. Hi. Hello, Ima. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, Mamu. I'm Mamu. <laughs> Good afternoon, boys. You're all bad. Yeah, yeah. Someone sorry. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to UMI Fest 2020, an international event held by Office of International Affairs of Universitas Negeri Malang. UMI Fest aims to introduce Indonesian cultures and tourism, especially Malang, to international through five days online workshops and online competitions. My name is Imas, and I will be today's Master, Cer Master of Ceremony and Moderator for Indonesia 101. Before we start our event, I would like to read the workshop protocol. Okay. First, it is recommended to use a laptop or PC for easier and better features. Second, it is recommended to use a headset or earphones for clear and better sound. Third, turn on camera as we are about to have fun together. And fourth, Adjust your name or ID screen using the advice from up before starting the workshop. The workshop, your name underscore country of origin. The next is turn off your microphone or mute mode as your default situation. You may need to turn it back on when it's needed. Next, ensure ensure your network has a stable internet connection. And the last, you may need you may have snacks or coffee or tea next to you to enjoy the workshop. The protocol will be effective from the first day of workshop until the last day, which is on Friday. And without further ado, let's start our event by listening to the opening remarks from Director of Office of International Affairs of Universitas Negeri Malang, Mrs. Effie Eliana. Please give a big hand for Mrs. Effie Eliana. Oh, hello. This is so festive. I'm so happy. Very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, well, it is my honor to welcome you all at the grand opening of UMI Fest 2020. 
UM stands for Universitas Negeri Malang in Bahasa Indonesia. Okay. In English, you can call it State University of Malang, but we are so used to with the Bahasa Indonesia, UM. 2020 is a special year. The global pandemic of COVID-19 has led to both frustrations, but at the same time, also countless innovations in various aspects of our lives. Online education is now almost non-negotiable. Universities across the globe must cope with the changing situations in order to ensure the best delivery of education to students. Thus, also our commitments to international student communities. UM is not exempted. UM IFEST or UM International Festival is a transformation of our flagship program, UM ICAM, whose videos that you watched earlier. We have conducted UM ICAM since 2016, but this year we are forced to innovate, to still deliver the festival, but in a different way. So UMICAM and now UMIFEST engage international academic community in exploring Indonesian culture and tourism. The rapidly changing situations due to the pandemic has forced us to innovate in transforming our global brand UMICAM to an online spring program UMIFEST, which shouldn't be less festive. The program is also to mark UM's 66th anniversary. Thank you very much for taking the interest in the program. The series of workshop has attracted 60 participants from 26 countries. We're not going to stop here because there will be competitions that follow. Competitions on IGTV, short story writing, video clips, and vlogging. I hope the workshop will give you inspirations to explore further and create works on Indonesia. I also hope that it will spark your curiosity and interest in our university, Universitas Negeri Malang. I hope when the pandemic is over, you can come over to UM and then get involved in more our international activities, including UM ICAM, hopefully next year. So last but not least, broaden your vistas and embrace cultural diversity. Over to you, Imas, thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Efialiana, for giving opening remarks. And I would like to remind uh, all my fellow participants to change their name according to the protocol, the workshop protocol. Okay. Um, okay. Our next agenda is the first online workshop, Indonesia 101. Let me introduce our incredible speaker for today. He is an instructor of BIPA in Europe and consultant senior ASEAN specialist of World Bank. Please give a big hand for Mr. Ahmad Bayhaki. Hi everyone, good uh, afternoon from Indonesia or maybe good morning or, or evening from other parts of the world. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been First of all, I would like to thank um, uh, friends and colleagues, and of course, um, by Effie for inviting me again. This is my second time uh, delivering or uh, presenting something. I'm not gonna teach you guys anything. I'm gonna share my experience. So uh, please, um, I hope it's not too boring. Uh, this is also something very new for me, giving out, um, sharing through uh, online platform uh, and let's see how, I mean, it's very really sad that you guys cannot come to Malang. It's a beautiful city. It's an amazing place. I love that place very much. And uh, because of COVID, you guys cannot come. But I hope, hopefully, uh, from today, uh, it gives you some motivation to come uh, and learn the culture, learn the language, and of course, enjoying uh, Indonesia and especially Malang's uh, delicious food. So I'm going to start sharing my PowerPoint today. Uh, I'm going to give you some basic information and um, let's say knowledge about Indonesia. Hopefully it will give you some, um, uh, some motivation to learn more about the language, the culture, the, the people, and also uh, come here and visit Indonesia. So the first thing today, uh, we're not gonna 
I'm not trying, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna try to give you um, like lecture, it's gonna be very boring. So we'll try to see, uh, to watch some videos. Um, I'll give you some uh, basic language lessons, but it's, if it's gonna get very boring, then uh, I'm gonna skip some of the sessions. I will give you the very, very basic ones. Uh, so one day if you come to Indonesia, you at least know, uh, you know, you can survive there uh, because in some places, exotic ones, you won't, might, may not be able to speak English. But, um, and then uh, we have another half an hour session afterwards. Not, uh, it's a breakout where um, I think eight of you will be in one group and uh, you will do a conversation exercise. So uh, I have prepared uh, some four scenarios um, from this. And uh, please practice in the half an hour breakout rooms and you will have a homework. Um, it's not gonna be an annoying one. It's gonna be a fun one. So the homework is that you will do the uh, conversation with your partner uh, and then you make a video and there's gonna be a grand prize for the winner. Um, I think our friends from, from the iCamp will tell you what's the, what's the prize, but I think it's gonna be a big one. Okay, so uh, without delaying more, I am gonna start um, presenting. Let's see. Okay. Let's just quickly go there. Yeah. Right. Can you see my screen now? No? Yes, yes, I can see. Okay, thank you. I'm just trying to look for. All right, so let's start. Uh, the, the title of the, of the session is Indonesia 101. So I'm gonna try to give you um, a very short summary about Indonesia, uh, the culture, the people, and also the language uh, in about one hour. So I'm gonna be making it very, very quickly. Right, so let's start with perhaps a bit about myself. Uh, my name is Ahmad Bayhaki. So, um, well, it's short, people call me Aki. I am originally from Jakarta, Indonesia. I am from ethnic Batawi. Um, throughout the, the course of my life, um, I've been living in Indonesia and then I moved to Singapore for several years for, for university and, and, and working there. And I moved at some point when I was living in Singapore, I lived in Canada for a year for an exchange program. And then I leave uh, until, until 2017 or three years ago, I've been living in Europe for about 15 years. So that's where I've been around. And while I was around, I am also very interested in languages and culture. And I've, I've managed to, or I'm lucky enough to have been able to pick up some of the languages that are in the, in the places where I lived in. Uh, of course, English. And then I, I, um, I live in Belgium for about 10 years uh, where um, I need to speak French and Dutch. Uh, and when I was in university a long time ago, although I already forgot now, uh, I managed to learn also Japanese. So that's, that's uh, where I come from. Uh, at the moment, I'm working in Jakarta for about three years now. Um, I used to start as an as a, uh, information technology consultant for dozens of years. Uh, and now I am a consultant in uh, oceans. So I deal with a lot of Indonesian uh, policy on fisheries and, and marine. Uh, in the country. It's a very exciting work in Indonesia. Yeah, because it's a big country on and marine. Anyway, that's about me. Uh, what I want to start with is that if you look at Indonesia, right, this is the map of Indonesia. As you can see on the left side, it's, it's a very strategic position geographically or even politically. And many you see later on, uh, Indonesia is the archipelago here, right? We have about 17,000 islands, big ones, small ones, 17,000 islands, nobody knows the exact numbers because daytime you have more, nighttime some of the islands go underwater, right? But um, what's make it very um, uh, interesting is that it's on the equator, so we have a tropical climate, which is really, really nice. At the same time, it's really, really right on the equator, so we are quite uh, calm in terms of typhoon or anything like that, we are safe from that, but we are on the ring of fire. 
which is we are basically all of these areas are uh, active volcanoes. That's why we have a lot of volcanic eruptions, uh, earthquakes and stuff like that. But nevertheless, those are the minus part. Uh, the plus side, we are between two big oceans, the Indian Oceans on the left and then the Pacific Oceans on the right. And we are also uh, between two big continents. We have the Asian continents on the northern part and we have the big Australian continent on this side. Now, because of this, we have a lot of uh, climate and culture are also influenced by these uh, geographical locations. More importantly, like for the, for if you're in the marine and fisheries, we have a lot of fish uh, traveling from this side to the other side and they all meet in the Indonesian part. And that's why we have a lot of tuna, for example, and all the big fish, the nice ones, all they all come and stay in Indonesia. <laughs> so I want you to, to also be like the fish just come in and stay in Indonesia as well. And then they migrate as well afterwards. So, and then this is what I was talking about. Uh, we are unique because we are, uh, if, you, if, you, if you study uh, perhaps biology or uh, I don't know, any branch of biology that's dealing with plants and animals. Since Indonesia is between the two continents, we have these two uh, lines, uh, Mr. Wallace and Weber, the two uh, smart people. Um, they found out that the, so Indonesian uh, uh, animal lines or even plants lines are divided into three. So there's the Western part uh, divided by Wallace lines. They all look like the Asian animals. You have the bear, the tigers, the elephants, uh, rhinoceros and orangutans, right? But then uh, let's jump to the Eastern part. This is where you will see animals that uh, will be similar to Australia or the Pacific, like animals with pockets like kangaroos, wallabies, uh, and stuff like that. And then you have the animals in the center, which is a combination of both the uh, Western and Eastern, and also native to the local ones, like the dragon komodo. And you have some animals who look like a monkey, but they will have a pocket and stuff like that. So it's, it's a very interesting one. It's a very, it's a country that's gonna, it's very rich with uh, resources, the natural resources uh, and the rest. Now, if we jump in, if you look at the people, uh, we have about 270 million people. So it's one of the biggest countries in the world. I think we're number four, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then among those 270 million people, uh, there's 633 ethnic groups. Uh, can you imagine, right? And then it's even more than 700 languages spoken by these ethnic groups. And these are not dialects. Nobody understands each other's language. Even in the same island, you will have uh, same island, different region, different language. That's completely different ones. Um, and then we have also uh, six official religions uh, plus. So official means the state acknowledges and gives support. And uh, the other ones are allowed to grow in the country, but they don't have support. Uh, let's say building up um, uh, places to worship and stuff like that, they will have to do on their own. Uh, and then we have indigenous beliefs as well. So it's a, it's a rich country in many aspects, religion, people, culture, languages, whatever you name it, we have the most diverse one. Uh, I believe in the world as well, could be. Uh, and then we are at the same time, because we're the biggest country in Southeast Asia, we're also the fastest growing economy in, in, in the region with about seven out of the 10 tech unicorns right now in Asia are actually in Southeast Asia are located in Indonesia. So uh, for you guys who are really wanting to work in a high-speed, high-tech uh, startup, she can come into Indonesia and start to gain your experience here as well. Um, and then, so when we talk about the people, how on earth are you gonna uh, put everyone together in one place? I mean, how do you tie them together with these different languages and, you know, ethnics and they fight and they like do whatever, right? But we're very lucky we have, I mean, we have several things that we bind us together uh, but the one that is very important is the language. So Bahasa Indonesia is, I would say, the one and foremost, the utmost uh, element that binds us together. Now, I live in Belgium. I live in Canada, or a country with just two languages. The French uh, in Canada is a French speaking and then the English speaking. In Belgium, you have the, the Dutch, the French speaking and the German speaking. And the number of bickering and complexity in the country, the fights and stuff, it's amazing, there's two languages. Now imagine if Indonesia doesn't have Bahasa Indonesia and the 700 languages and the ethnic groups, you can imagine the chaos 
and the chaotic things going to happen in the country and the people. So it's 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 very uh, amazing to have uh, one thing that you don't think about, but actually it's very it matters a lot in in the life of the people. Now I'm going to talk about religion a bit because in the country it's an important thing. Uh, Indonesia is the world's most populous Muslim country. It's not a it's, it's, it's not a Muslim country, but it's, it has the most people, has the most Muslim in the world, even. Uh, where Islam came from, Saudi Arabia. We don't have as many uh, Muslims as in Indonesia. As you can see on the chart on the right, the green one is um, uh, the Muslim people in Indonesia. This is based on in, uh, census in 2010, outdated, but I, I don't think it's gonna change that much. So Islam is like 80% of people in Indonesia and a bigger chunk are the, uh, Christianity, uh, Protestants and Catholics. And then, uh, oh, sorry, the Catholics, Roman Catholics are differentiated that about 3%. We have Hinduism and Buddhism uh, and also Confucianism. So there's the six religions that's uh, official in Indonesia, plus other religious, uh, normally it's like uh, 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 customary beliefs and stuff like that. So religion is not the ideology uh, of the country and it's never been, for example, never had a single religious party has ever won the election like full blown. Uh, it could be this coalition, but uh, that also shows that Indonesians are, are uh, quite secular in a way, but there are strong influence of religious um, parties in the politics. Uh, and then the religions in Indonesia uh, are uh, intertwined with local culture. So you will see some practices of Islam that you probably wouldn't find in the Middle East um, because it's been, um, you know, it's it's um, it's changing. We integrate our culture. For example, uh, as you see in the picture here, uh, this is what we call baduk. So baduk is like a, a percussion uh, made of uh, animal skin. It's huge. It's normally placed in the mosque, and whenever we're gonna have the uh, prayer call five times a day uh, in Indonesia, normally start with a baduk, uh, you know, rendition. So it's a uh, it's nice. It's also used for uh, many celebrations, Islamic celebrations and stuff like that. And the form of Hinduism or Buddhism in Indonesia, you probably wouldn't find in India, for example. So it's uh, it's been, uh, there's integration of local culture. There's also a melting pot where everything is intertwined. So, so that's a, a bit about religion in Indonesia. Next, a uh, very short brief history about Indonesia, how we came about. And this is uh, the reason why I don't wanna uh, talk some about this, but this is it has influence on what I'm going to uh, interview you next. So we had uh, hundreds of years of colonization, about at the very least 300 ish, 350. Uh, started with the European coming in. Uh, the Portuguese came around 1512. Uh, very simple. European wanted um, spices. <laughs> they come for uh, to Asia, to India, to Indonesia for spices and trades. Uh, and at the same time, there's the evangelical stuff as well going on. Uh, but the Portuguese didn't last very long. They took, they, they were there for a few years, uh, get all the stuff from Maluku, spices and, you know, set up some stuff. And then the, the Dutch came, uh, came around and the Dutch was uh, mainly on the economical gains. So they have the VOC, which is basically like a, a economic arm of the, uh, of the country. Uh, they they like Indonesia. They stayed very long. They stayed 350 years at the least, uh, according to history, uh, and, and they stayed uh, very long. Uh, and then during the World War II, there's a bit of a stint where Japan uh, was in power for about three and a half years, until finally we got our independence in August 1945. So uh, last year we are celebrating our independence. And um, through colonizations, we also get influence. Well, well, it's not only colonization, it's also through uh, trade. We have long history of Hinduism and Buddhism in, 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 the, in the archipelago, really, really long before the yeah, European came. We have history of uh, amazing kingdoms from Java called Majapahit, or that's a Hindu kingdom that goes around that uh, according to history, even the area of Majapahit uh, as big as reaching out to Thailand and, and Indochina and the Philippines and the rest, right? And we also have 
um, Buddhist kingdoms from Sumatra, Sriwijaya, which was also very, very big. And then when the uh, European came, uh, they also brought in Christianity uh, until Islam came as well. Well, Islam and Hindu and Buddhism has been around because the Strait of Malacca, uh, close to Malaysia and Indonesia, are the center of trade uh, in the past, and people are there. Uh, and, in, and Islam also came through when um, they, when there's a movement to uh, for independence from the European uh, through the uh, Islamic kingdoms and stuff like that. So this all influence making uh, Indonesia has already a rich influence inside from the many cultures, but also there's the in, ex, international influence that we have from so many years already, historically. Uh, we are a democracy, uh, one of the biggest democracies in the world, and we also elect our president directly, uh, like in the States. Okay, so that's a brief history. Um, I think I've talked too much for now. I'm gonna um, let you watch something fun. I will just do a bit of um, uh, introduction on culture and heritage in Indonesia. I think it's, there's amazing videos uh, because you can't come here. So might as well just try to have uh, the same experience, I hope. Let me see if I can share this quickly um, and easily. Can you see the screen? And the sound. Now, before I proceed, um, can someone confirm if you can see and hear? Yes, I can see. Can yeah. you can see it. Yes, I yeah. can see. Yes, we can see this. Yes. Can you hear the sound? Okay. Yes, sir. We can hear the sound. Yes. The sound is good. Yeah, we can see. Yes, I see. Yes. For thousands of years, people have cherished the many wonders of these enchanted islands inspiring histories of the land below the wind. Astounding relics from prehistoric times are testament to the wondrous age-old cultures. Here, fascinating indigenous folkways live through the test of time, emphasizing the resilience of local creativity and vigor. Magnificent divine temples adorn the landscape, as if forming an exhibition of pervasive spirituality. Religion has always been the cornerstone of life since ancient times. Indigenous wisdoms are traditionally practiced in pursuance of living in harmony with nature. filling the hearts of both hosts and visitors. Funeral rites is a festivity, as much as it is a celebration of life, an occasion to gather family members from all over the world. Rich architectural heritage shaped by diverse cultural, historical, and geographical influences. Recognized as one of Indonesia's true national treasures. Today's legacy of art and craft continues to enrich the culture, playing a significant role in the daily and ceremonial life of the people adapting wonderful traditional art form to modern times, resulting in popular tourist attraction.
keeping remarkable folk artistic expression alive. As they are embodiment of the locals' way of life. Astounding cultural and historical diversity where various cultures have crossed paths for many centuries. Impressive variety of numerous ethnic groups. An interwoven history of Indonesia's beautiful diversity. Cultural history unfolds in the landscape. Wonderful Indonesia. Right, so uh, that's the first introduction about the culture. Uh, I have a, another video, I think. Uh, I just watched video, and it's about to rain in here as well. <laughs> it's nice for me to watch video. Now, the reason why I think it's, it's um, to give you a bit of a feeling like being in Indonesia as well. Every strong community that's ever existed started with sharing. So this one. Is to give you a bit of a small introduction about five minutes uh, of the religion in Indonesia. Indonesia is a melting pot of different cultures living together in harmony under the same flag. This week, I decided to delve deep into Indonesia's religious practices with my insider, Jamal. Along the way, I discover some priceless relics, talk to a man about magic, drop in on a street party, and gain insight into the changing attitudes of young people. This is Spirituality in Indonesia. I've always been very curious about people, culture, especially philosophy. And I think with religion and spirituality, you get a, a good mix of all three things. So I definitely had to go to Borobudur. It was breathtaking walking up there and standing there with Jamal, watching the sunrise. I can see why they built the monument there, because they knew that it was going to look phenomenal. This is the largest Buddhist temple in the world. Before it was found in 19th century, it was fully covered by land, dust, and forest. This is very important for us Indonesian because it's also a historical site for Indonesia. After Borobudur, we set off to Prambanan, which is the largest Hindu temple in the Southern Hemisphere. When we got there, there were a lot of local tourists. So they were taking a lot of photos. And when they saw us, they wanted to take a lot of photos with us. So uh, I felt like a bit of a monument as well. This is uh, our national heritage, yeah. so it doesn't matter either it's a Hindu, Buddha, Islam. Yeah. So, so it's just one culture just coming together. Culture. Yeah, that's Indonesian beautiful. Because it's impossible to deny that we uh, consist of different religions, multicultural, mm. multi-ethnicity. Indonesia, I think, is one of the most diverse country mm. in the world. Yeah. Uh, Nikki, Chu. Yeah. Hello. Example. I'd never done anything like this. We were going to go visit a white magic doctor. His name's Romo and he's been practicing this all his life. After we sat down, we got to know each other a bit more. He started to take a peek into my life and he was telling me that he knew where I lived. And I didn't believe him. So I said, what do you mean? What do you mean you know where I lived? He saw that on his meditation, your house in Australia, there is a street and there's also a street and your house is around this area, around this area. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> would like to give you kind of uh, invisible protector 
Okay, all right. Yeah. I'd be open to doing yeah. that. At first, I was skeptical, but then after you did what you did, I do feel a sense of peace and also a sense of confidence. After we finished up with the White Magic Healer, we had a bit of a wonder, and we just sort of happened upon a cultural dance session. Jamal was telling us that the reason for dance in the whole program was because one of their sons was returning from a long leave of absence. So the prodigal son returns and so they put on a whole show for him. By far the biggest religion in Indonesia is Islam. Over 87% of Indonesia's population are Muslim. That's a whopping 225 million people. I wanted to learn more about how young people were engaging with Islam, so I met up with a local guy named Kevin to gain some insight. Back uh, in the old days, where you got directed by your parents, but nowadays you have the freedom to see and uh, search by yourself. Me and myself, I'm a bit struggling with what I have. I respect the religion, uh, but I don't do the practice anymore. Uh, but because I'm born with this uh, religion, and then being um, born in the Asian countries where you have to respect what your parents want to have, it's kind of hard a hard decision for me if I want to break out from what I have at the moment. Some people understand, of course, because uh, I believe I'm not the only one who's having this crisis. This is my own life. Um, I mean, uh, I'm supposed to have a freedom to choose which one is right or wrong. I think it's definitely important for travellers to come to Indonesia to really see how communities can form with one culture and many religions also playing a part. I think the culture is what brings all the different variables together. That kind of forms the bedrock of how people live here. <laughs> All right, so that's a very interesting one. I have another one, just the last one that we're gonna watch in this session. Um, it's, uh, it's a fun stuff, so it wouldn't take so long. But I think it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a bit of a dramatization of Indonesian stereotypes in a funny way. So I um, <laughs> hope my fellow Indonesians are not offended, but you're probably also gonna be laughing together with this one. Um, let's see. Setelah beberapa bulan di rumah aja, kita kembali bareng teman-teman lagi. Di... Hey Chloe, have you seen my shirt? Oh yeah, it's right here. What? Are you serious? Why are you doing this? It's a great floor mat. Why can't we use your shirt? Hmm, uh. take some popcorn. Oh, no, no. I got something better. Krupa gudang. What is that? Mm. Oh! Mm. Oh, oh, are your teeth okay? It's so good. Oh! Come on, get on, let's go! Uh, yeah. How are we supposed to okay. get on? Okay. Three people? Okay. Yeah, let's try it. Go. Go. Woo! Uh, Chloe, where's the toilet paper? Just use the terpokan. The what? The water gun thingy next to you. Uh, how do you use this thing? What? Yeah, this will spice up your life even more. Okay, what is this? So good! Trust me. Oh my god. It's sambal. Not spicy at all. I'll try it. Get the bell! Ah! Oh my god, do you need me to call an ambulance? No, call my massage parlor. Her name what? is Ibu Yanti. What? Hurry, they close at five. Uh, okay, hey Siri, call Ibu Yanti. <sighs> Whoa, what's this bag for? I came prepared. With what? Indomie for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We're gonna eat at restaurants. And a rice cooker, because we eat rice with Indomie. You're bringing a rice cooker on the plane. Mm -hmm. Are you sick? Yeah. I got just the thing for you. What? 
my magic coin. What's Turn a coin gonna do? Okay. Oh! 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 Gonna heal your pain, oh. your fever. No, it's giving me more pain. Mmm. This is the best pizza in the world. Mm, I think it's missing something. Wait, what? Mm. Oh my god. You just put rice on that? Mmm. So much better. Okay, now that is weird. Hey, let's cuddle. Come here. Oh, jeez. What is this? My ghouling. The love of my life. Did your ghouling pay for your dinner tonight? Do you have a tissue? I have some sauce on my face. Uh, oh, no, I don't need the bathroom. Just a tissue. They're the same thing. Oh, it's like multi-purpose. All right, let's go for a run. Why are you all covered up? Because I can't let the sun burn me. Okay, fine, let's go. Uh, wait, 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 sunscreen first, uh, sunscreen. Mm. Hey, do you want a grape? Oh. oh my God. That's so rude, no left hands in my house. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> let me send this to Chloe. <laughs> oh, she's typing. <laughs> what, WKWK, wook, wook, wook? What does that mean? Hey, what are you listening to? Oh, it's Dado. You can oh. dance with me. Okay. Just feel the rhythm. Oh. Oh, like that? Like it? Can you leave? Saat butuh yang ekstra, jual mobilmu di oilx.co.id slash oilxautos. Jadwalkan inspeksi mobil dari staf ahli untuk penawaran sesuai kondisi dan pembayaran. So that's the last video. Um, let me go back to my presentation again. Right, don't worry. Um, I will share the uh, the slides later on for you guys to check the videos if you want to uh, watch that again. So you can see on that um, three videos. First was uh, very interesting about culture and and uh, heritage. Second one is about religion. Also very very. Uh, you get a bit of um, uh, interesting insight about the um, about our um, you know uh, folk uh, beliefs. Uh, and then we have the last one was a dramatization of Indonesian stereotypes where we can't eat without rice. We eat everything with rice and uh, <laughs> and other stuff. So for, uh, I'm sure uh, some of the stuff that you saw just now in the last video could be shared by some of the Asian friends. Like you can't use your left hand to do uh, to give something to people or to do a lot of things because this is considered really bad, right? Um, Right, so that's about the video. Uh, let's try to move on a bit. Um, so, so I show you all the videos on all the backgrounds. It all boils down to uh, Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, so uh, why uh, I introduce you the history a bit and stuff like that. So Bahasa Indonesia is essentially Malay language. Um, so one of the reasons why uh, when we got, uh, when the founding fathers were trying to, um, you know, put together all these 17,000 islands to put together um, the language at the time, Malay was used in the region, including in the Malacca Strait, for all the traders and people in the area as their lingua franca, which is basically common language used uh, mostly by traders, and it's, it's spread around the archipelago, so it was quite easy. And Malay language uh, in Indonesia, and Bahasa Indonesia uh, as an old language, uh, falls under Malayo. Polynesian language. So some of the words could be a bit similar like the uh, Tagalog from the Philippines or perhaps some Pacific language uh, like the word Lima means five. Uh, I think I've seen some of the similar uh, vocabularies in, in Pacific language and in the Philippines. Uh, and because of this historical uh, from the Hindu era, Buddhism, uh, European colonization, we borrow a lot of words and vocabularies and construct from um, from the international languages. Okay, mainly, uh, one of the reasons why uh, Indonesia is not called Malay language because the language has evolved a lot from the Malay language. It has a, a contribution from the local, the 700 ethnic languages, mostly Javanese, of course, one of the biggest ones. And we have the international ones like the Sanskrit. Uh, we have so many Sanskrit based uh, vocabularies and languages. Uh, we have the Dutch, uh, contributing a lot, and I forgot the Portuguese also contribute a lot, uh, especially European stuff that we don't make ourselves, like manteiga, uh, butter, or bolu, uh, means cake. So you can see the Europeans bring brought their own stuff, and then we got to know it. Like pastel is this um, snack food shaped like a, a crescent. And those are from the Portuguese. The Dutch definitely many influence even until today. We have still a lot of um, regulations and rules 
from the Dutch colonial era hasn't changed a bit. And the language construct as well, we follow the Dutch construct. And of course, English, uh, as time goes by, we derive many, many uh, English words and vocabularies. Um, luckily, we use Latin alphabets uh, and Arab numbers, so zero until 10. Uh, so it's easier for us. Uh, there was a time in the past that we used um, Arabic uh, as the alphabet uh, for some time uh, in the Malay uh, era. And one of the reasons why Malay was chosen as the, um, as the national language as Basa Indonesia and not Javanese, which is very strange because Javanese is spoken by the majority of Indonesian people. It has 85 million people speaking it. One of the reasons is we don't have, the Malay language, there's no hierarchy. Uh, it means that in some languages you have a uh, language for normal people, for the higher level people and for the kings and stuff like that. So Malay doesn't have those things. Uh, and lucky enough, Indonesia uh, doesn't know tenses. So there's no past tense or uh, you don't have to do anything specific. Yeah, even if you learn French or you know many other languages, you have past tense if I, where your verb will change and other things. Indonesia doesn't have this thing, so that's easier to learn. Uh, we don't have gender. One of the reasons why Malay was becoming um, Indonesian language is also new, gender neutral. There's no he or she. And in some languages like uh, Germanic language or Latin language, there is attribution to gender. Like for example, a table is feminine uh, and you know something else is masculine. So we don't have those things in Indonesia. So it's in a sense, it's a lot easier to learn the language and some of the sense it could be a bit difficult, but to start, to start the basic thing, I can assure you, if you live here for a month, you'll be able to go around speaking the Bahasa very quickly as well because of this uh, uh, somewhat relatively simpler construct than any other languages. And we are trying to push it to the United Nations that it will be a, a language of the world instead of English, because it's very difficult. Um, okay, so this was the, some of the contents I introduced, I removed some from last year, but I think it's gonna be very, very boring if I give you a language lesson on your introduction to Indonesia. Uh, I'm just going to introduce some of those things very quickly. I'm not going to do a lot of things. And you're going to do uh, a lot of the fun stuff, but you're going to do a conversation. But we're just going to do basic stuff today. I'm not going to be very uh, too, too much in-depth. Um, I'll be happy to, uh, there's some resources at the end where you can learn the language yourself. There's a whole package from the Indonesian government for you to learn Bahasa Indonesia as a second language. Um, so let's start with, uh, the basic logistics. So these are our alphabets. So I'm gonna pronounce, now you're welcome to join me to pronounce uh, the, the alphabet so that you, um, and the good news about this alphabet that it doesn't change the sound. Like in English, uh, it changes, right? Or in some of the languages it change. In English, for example, uh, the letter I could be pronounced E or I. So in, in Bahasa, it's constant, so it doesn't change. So you, when you read later on in your conversation class after this, you don't have to worry about changing, it stays the same. So let me start. So this is A, B, C, D, A, F, G, H, E, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, K, R. You have to roll the R. R, S, T, U, P, W, X, Y, Z. So. A bit similar with the English or perhaps your language alphabet, the sounds, but again, it stays the same. It doesn't change with the, with the, when it, you go into uh, the words. Okay, so we have certain stuff. Uh, this is letters combination. So there's I, au, oi. So like pandai here, pandai means smart. Uh, we have harimau, harimau, au, this is tiger. You have he, he is much more influenced from the Arabic language. So you have akhir, akhir is the end. 
It's also an Arabic language, Akhir. And you have ang. This is probably the one that's quite difficult for some people I know. Ang is like ngilu, bangun. Bangun is to wake up. Bangun. Or you will see this a lot. Orang. Orang is people. Orang. So ang. There's a sound almost in your nose. Nasal sound. Also, there's another nasal sound, which is ny. So this is N and Y, ny. So you would say hanya, hanya, nya, 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 nya. So it's like that, right? <laughs> so hanya means only or just. Or nyata, nyata means real. So that's that's the, the nasal sound. And then you have the S and Y, which is sh. Sh is also from the Arabic. So it's like, uh, this in, in English, it sounds like SH, like shampoo. For example, right or short, that's the S Y. So this is sharat uh, or is sharat. So sharat means the um, uh, regulations. Oh no, it's pre requirements. Is sharat, sharat. So that's the uh, letters combination. Then so we have um, yeah, it's a pretty. I don't know how to make it interactive, but it's fine. Um, I'm just gonna show you some of the numbers here. So we have the Arabic numbers. We have Nol or zero is nol. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, enam tujuh. tujuh. Yeah, thank you. Delapan, Go ahead. Sembilan, sepuluh. Tujuh. Thank you. So that's um, that's how it is. Until ten, and you have the tens. Um, I'll, I'll let you read this one. If I go you all around, it's going to take forever. Sometimes I teach numbers in one class only. <laughs> so, but this is how we use the numbers. And then we have the hundreds, which is ratus. So 400 is empat ratus. Thousands is ribu. So three is tiga, tiga ribu. For the thousand. So, that's the counting and you have the millions and, and stuff like that. So quite um, luckily we have the Arabic numbers. Um, from time, uh, we just add the numbers and we say jam. So seven o'clock means jam to do. And we use the 24 hour system sometimes to make it easier for evening. So jam, uh, jam to do uh, 7 p.m. is jam blast sometimes. Or if you already know the contract, you can stay jam tuju. And jam tuju, empat lima. So that's just number, that's 745. And uh, 9.30 is half 10, for example. Uh, so this is just an introduction for you. You can uh, do exercise later on your own. If you get the book, uh, the link I send you later. And you have the name of the days, interestingly, is the way you count in Arabic. So Minggu, uh, so the first day of the week in Bahasa is Ahad, which is means the first, like also in Arabic is Ahad. And uh, Senin is is name in Arabic, right? So it's Monday is Senin, Tuesday is Salasa, Wednesday is Rabu, uh, Thursday is Kamis, Jum'at, and then Sabtu. So that's Monday, the Sunday to Saturday. Uh, but then uh, the Sunday, they are more knowingly as Minggu. So um, historically, or uh, this is from folklore, uh, it was um, priest Domingo who introduced the holiday in Sunday. So the day was dedicated to him, but that's the folklore. And there was no scientific historical proof or anything. But yes, in Indonesia, we thought of uh, Minggu instead of Ahad. So tomorrow is uh, Besok, Hari ini is today, and kemarin is yesterday. Um, that's just an introduction on the, on the days. So, uh, and then this is how you greet people. Uh, we use a lot of hello or hi. So hello is very Dutch. It's not hello, it's hello. Uh, and then you have, if you're very formal. Now we use a lot of salamat. Now I know in, in, in Tagalog, salamat means something else, but salamat is an Arabic uh, word. It means salam, right? It means to give you like peace, be peaceful. So selamat, uh, if you combine with the time of the day, then you become, so when you say good morning, it means selamat pagi, pagi is morning. So you have uh, selamat siang, this is good day. 
you have selamat sore, good afternoon, and selamat malam, which is good evening. Uh, and then you have other other ways to greet people uh, in many places, perhaps let's say in Java or Sumatra, where a lot of Muslim people, people tend to say assalamualaikum. Um, and uh, but that's in Eastern part, perhaps where majority are Christian, they don't use that, they use a lot of salamat padi. But it's safe enough to say salamat uh, in many occasions in Bahasa, or just hello if you're to your close friends. So this is a chart. <laughs> Okay, there is no exact science when to use siang or the normally pagi, siang, sore is a matter of time and it's very personal. Um, people tend to just say pagi until around 10 in the morning when the sun is up but not very hot yet. And then you would say selamat siang between 10 to 2 p.m. Sore is when you see that the sun is already a bit going down, it's not so hot anymore until just before uh, the sunset and you would say sore, and then selamat malam is good evening. Uh, there is no good night in Bahasa, just selamat malam for everything. Because um, if you want to go to bed, you don't say good night, you say selamat tidur, tidur means sleep, right? And then you have, and then the last one, petang, really no one actually uses this selamat petang, only people on the TV will say that, and the newsreader on TV will say selamat petang. But just, to be safe, you can use selamat pagi, selamat siang, or malam. That's the three uh, uh, safe ones. So selamat, again, selamat. You will see more selamats later, uh, a lot of selamats. So when you say goodbye, it's uh, when you're casual, you say hello. When you're saying goodbye, normally you could say da or dada. -da. So da is a Dutch word, dag. And in the Netherlands, they would say dag to say hi and to say goodbye. So uh, Indonesia, I uh, would say da. And then you have, uh, if you're formal, you will say selamat tinggal. Selamat tinggal, or goodbye, is a formal one. And if it's a neutral one, uh, people will say see you. Uh, it could be formal, it could be informal. You say sampai jumpa, it means until we meet again. Uh, literally, it means like that. So sampai jumpa is see you or until we meet again. So these are three. Uh, the selamat tinggal is very formal. No one uses that. You will be safe enough to say sampai jumpa, and you say da to your friends, right? So that's that's how, how it is. And so this is again. I'm going to talk a bit about selamat. The word selamat is your magic word when you want to wish someone good things. Uh, so as as I said, as I said earlier, it derived from Arabic language. It means salam from salam. To well wish everyone. So you, if you want to eat, you will say, uh, if you want to, if you want to greet or well wish someone on activities, activities, you will say selamat and then the activity. So makan, which is eat. When you want to say, you know, bon appetit, you say selamat makan, right? If you want to go on a five kilometers marathon uh, running or 42 kilometers marathon, you will say selamat maraton, okay? <laughs> If you want to go climb up a tree, <laughs> selamat manjat pohon. And if you want to go to bed, you don't say good night. You say selamat tidur. So tidur is sleeping. So selamat tidur. Uh, and then when you have occasions like Christmas or Eid al-Fitri or big um, national celebrations, you also say selamat and then the name of the event. Like Christmas, you would say selamat natal. So natal is a Latin language perhaps brought by the European. And then Salamat is an Arabic language. As you can see, our Indonesian language is a mix of everything. So we say Salamat Natal. And Eid, uh, we call Salamat Idul Fitri. So that's the word Salamat, when you want to wish well or well-wishing people. Um, please bear that in mind. Um, and then the next one. So this is the culture in Indonesia. Um, handshake is the most common culture when you get introduced to people. And it's the same international standard. It means firm, uh, dry. You don't shake people's hand with dry hand. And right hand. That's very important. We don't use left hand anymore. So if you're a lefty, you have to, unfortunately, you have to use your right hand to handshake. So it's an international standard, right? Um, and then now for kids, kids, I will show you a video later. Kids to the older people, or if we, if you feel even someone that we respect so much, 
a lot of respect and hierarchy, we will kiss the hand. So basically you will put your hand in your tip of your nose. So it's like that. That's how we uh, pay respect uh, to older people or people you want to put respect to. So that's the second way. Uh, bowing is not very common, not like in Japan where you do bowing like that, but then you will see bowing when you go into uh, places with services, like when you go to a hotel or restaurant, uh, people will say bowing like that, and sometimes it's uh, added with this. But in some cultures, uh, bowing is also very important. Uh, when you want to, let's say, pass, or you're passing people and people are sitting in front of you, you will bow a little bit while you're getting excused to pass the road. And of course, we also have the wave. When you say goodbye, you will wave your hand like da or sampai jumpa, things like that. And the last part um, where it could be culturally sensitive uh, and uh, it's also a note that you don't have to feel a bit sensitive when someone doesn't want to shake your hand. Uh, in some area and some parts, touching is quite sensitive in some culture or doesn't necessarily have to be the Muslim culture, uh, but it's, it's a lot in the Muslim culture where normally you see um, if you're a man and a woman, they normally uh, refuse to touch your hand. So they would do this. So when you see Indonesian people, uh, when you give your hand to handshake and instead they do this, that means as a clue for you, you withdraw your hand and you start giving this sign as well. So it's like more like Thailand. Uh, Thai style greeting, right? So, uh, but that's the non-touching handshake. So that's that's a different type of way of, of greetings and saying goodbye in Indonesia and a bit of a cultural background. So there's a, a funny video here. Let me see if I can play this. This is the Indonesian football team, the kids, the junior ones. Indonesia yang menunjukkan rasa hormat terhadap orang yang lebih tua. Selain mencium tangan wasit, beberapa pemain tim Indonesia menggunakan belakon yang semakin menguatkan identitas budaya Indonesia. Ternyata budaya mencium tangan wasit ini juga sering dilakukan dalam pergelaran Danu Nation Cup setiap tahun. Tak ayal, aksi para anak bangsa ini membuat wasit tersenyum. Mencium tangan wasit memang hanya dilakukan oleh timnas Indonesia saat prosesi bersalaman dengan wasit sebelum pertandingan. Maka tidak. Alright, so ya saatnya kami ajak anda. That's meeting and greeting. Um, I'm gonna do a quick one. Uh, I think my time is almost up, which is good. Um, introducing yourself. This is the start that you're gonna do in your breakout room. Uh, so this is a normal way to introduce yourself. I'm gonna do a basic one. Um, so. Uh, you see here on the left side, there's the English translation. Um, when you read uh, the notes later on at your spare time, uh, you can look at this. So this is how people normally introduce themselves uh, in a setting like this or in a formal situation. Uh, or in a formal, you would say selamat something, but this is an informal one that you can later practice with your friend. It's hello, nama saya, my name, nama saya, Aki. Oh. Normally you start with full name. Nama saya Ahmad Bayhaki. Biasa dipanggil Aki. So it means, hello, my name is Ahmad Bayhaki. I'm usually called Aki. Halo, nama saya Ahmad Bayhaki. Biasa dipanggil Aki. And then you go around telling people where you come from. Saya dari Jakarta, Indonesia. So dari is from, saya is I am, right? Saya dari Jakarta, Indonesia. Now in Indonesia, it's also quite common. People will ask how old you are. I know it's sometimes uncomfortable for some people, but in case they ask you, this is how you tell people how old you are. Umur saya, umur is age. Umur saya 28 tahun. And then they will they will ask you, what do you do? So you would say, I'm assuming most of you are university students. So the word for university students in Bahasa is mahasiswa. So you would tell them, saya mahasiswa di Universitas Malang. Or if you come from, let's say, Leiden University, saya mahasiswa di Leiden University. 
or if you want to make it Indonesian language, saya mahasiswa di Universitas Leiden atau Universitas Berkeley, Universitas Syahkuala, and stuff like that. So that's how you tell people where you are coming from. And then, uh, also very common in Indonesia, they will ask you what you like to do in your spare time. So uh, let's, uh, the last part, you know, many people will say, hobi saya, my hobby, hobi saya, sepak bola, football, dan, and, baca buku. So uh, in your practice class later, you have a few options. Uh, you can ask your facilitator the words in Indonesian for some of the activities. So that's why you have to say hobi saya. You can say hobi, my hobby is to eat, right? Hobby is eating. So you can say hobi saya makan. Uh, hobi saya jogging. That's how you say it. And then the final word you will say senang Oops, sorry. Senang berkenalan dengan Anda. <clears throat> so it's I'm happy or nice to meet you. So that's the last part. Okay, so I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this is probably the end of my time. Uh, at the, I mean, I have a lot of other series of, of uh, stuff that I would like to uh, introduced to you today, but I think it's uh, it will be a lot boring if I teach you the whole language course in one day. It's going to be very confusing. However, so in my slides, you will find some notes on the practical Indonesian, some tips about how to make adjective and adverb, and how to make plural nouns and stuff like that. You could learn it if you would like to get to know more and motivate to learn more, but if you one day if you come to Indonesia and you want to learn the language, you want to have a basic Indonesian language, I have set up a link in here on the last slide so you can download uh, a set of books and uh, a lot of resources for free uh, to learn Bahasa Indonesia as a second language. Uh, the important thing you want to download is the first day, the first seven days in Indonesia. It's a, a very uh, useful guide for tourism on how to, you know, you want to buy something at a store, you want to eat at a restaurant, uh, you want to buy a ticket at a rail station and stuff like that. So please download that next time you want to go and visit Indonesia. There's also a lot of materials for Indonesian language courses as a second language. The Indonesian Association for uh, this, we call it BIPA. Uh, we follow the European language uh, classification. So there's A1 up to C1. Uh, and you can follow those uh, in sequence and, and it's going to help you. There's also audio materials you can download on the website so you can listen to a lot of uh, exercises there. All right, so next later on in the breakout rooms, you will have conversation uh, prepared for you. Uh, some of them are taken from the first seven days in Indonesia. And for now, um, I know we don't have much time for questions. Uh, I don't know if you have time later on, but uh, I'll be contactable at my email. I don't know if I put that in my slides, but you can also ask from uh, our lovely friends from University Malang how, how to reach out to me. Uh, I'd be very welcome to answer your questions about Indonesia and also the language and many other things you want to discuss about. So I hope you enjoy your stay uh, in the virtual uh, camp. And I really truly hope one day you will come and visit Indonesia and we can see each other and we can discuss about a lot more other things. Thank you very much. And I hand back to uh, our MC. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Ahmad Bayhaki. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can say thank you, Bapak Ahmad Bayhaki. Yeah, terima kasih, Bapak. Sama-sama. Oh ya, terima kasih. <laughs> Oke. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions uh, that you would like to ask to Bapak Ahmad Bayhaki? Perhaps hmm. one or two questions. Anyone? It was so interesting learning like the alphabets, numbers. I have one question. 
Okay. Uh, actually, okay. the Bahasa Indonesia, is it the mother language of Malay language or Bahasa Indonesia from Malay language? So it's the second one. So it is derived from the Malay language. And then the Malay language, we add the local language and some influence of the Dutch, the Portuguese, and English. So which one more formal? Bahasa Indonesia or Bahasa Malay? Um, in my, uh, in where university I went to, uh, so the Indonesian is the more formal one. Uh, it's more formalized. Um, you can also see a lot of uh, Malaysian teachers and, and uh, they will, I'll say, let's just say this way. In my university in Singapore, Indonesian language is called advanced Malay. <laughs> I know it, I it doesn't sound very well with our Malay friends, but just the way it is. It's because it's more formalized. Okay, thank you. And then uh, we have some questions also here in the group chat. We have like, why left hand is such a taboo in Indonesia? Perhaps uh, Baba Ahmad <laughs> Bayhaki can answer this. <laughs> Uh, so I also learned it's not only in Indonesia, a lot of Asian Asian countries, but also in some Europeans in the past, I was told it's not very polite to use left hand because, well, in Asia, we are told by our parents, the left hand is the one we use when we go to the toilet, when we clean up afterwards, right? So it's not a very clean word. But in, in, in some of the uh, my European friends who are Catholics, they told me when they were young, some like Indonesian parents, when they found out the kids start to write using left hand, they will, you know, try to smack your kid's hand because it's the hand of the devil. So that's how <laughs> I think some of us also get those stories. Well, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a pity. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, a lot of things in Indonesia, the rights are somewhat a better part of the, of the life. So let's say when you want to do things, a lot of things in Indonesia start with right. So when you want to walk, they will say start with your right foot. Uh, and then when you want to wash your hands or your arm, Start with your right arm. So it's, I think it's, it's somewhat, it could be a bit of a Islamic or Arabic influence, but it could also be something else in, in Asia. So that's, but the main thing about the left hand is because it's considered not very clean. <laughs> left hand not very clean. <laughs> <laughs> is that the same in okay. Vietnam? I thought that uh, I thought in in the China you're not allowed to use left hand as well, or? Um, no, in my opinion, I don't really see like left hand such a taboo in Vietnam. We can use both, but yes, um, of course, when writing, uh, our parents would bitter if we use the left hand. Definitely. <laughs> okay. so yeah. That's the same, yeah. Okay, and then. The next question is from Hrithik Chatri from Nepal. Am I pronounce it correctly? <laughs> Are Indonesian uh, language yes. written in... Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Are Indonesian language written in English alphabets or do they have separate Indonesian alphabets? No, we just went through that one. Uh, so we use the Latin alphabet, which is A to Z. So um, we use that one in the writings every day. Um, that's how, how we use it. But the pronunciation, as I try to sound it just now, is not the same as in English. But we have constant ones. So it's like the, let's say, Italian language or German language. Whatever you write is what you're going to say. It's not going to change. So E is E, never I. That's the good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And then I think the last one is from Julia from Vietnam, the very active one in group. Yeah. I see that Bahasa Indonesian is Malay language. So can Malaysians understand Indonesian? Yeah. Perhaps yeah. Malaysians so, also can answer this? Yeah, so the Malay language is the, let's say, the mother of the language for Bahasa Indonesia. But as, as I said again, it has evolved a lot. So you would think the Malay and Bahasa Indonesia as American and British English, right? Uh, a lot of cases, people will understand. But then when the Malay speak with, let's say, so when let's say you speak to Scottish people, you probably want to understand the accent, right? So that's how Malay people you know, probably understand the Bahasa from people, let's say, in the eastern part of Indonesia. And also with British and uh, American English, some words can mean completely different. 
um, chia sẻ cái dừa tươi uh, không có let's say a very easy tôi word that often make us laugh tôi ai uống cái đêm đầu tiên uh, à, chắc đêm đêm đầu tiên đúng không okay thank you so i was saying let's say one word called saranok which is in saranok in malay language means very happy Like, oh, it's Saranak to see you. I'm very happy to meet you. Saranak to meet you. We're in Indonesian like, Saranak means vulgar. <laughs> so we don't use the word Saranak. When I meet you, it's like, oh, Saranak to meet you. It's been like, you're so filthy. <laughs> I don't want to meet you. <laughs> like you dress up, you don't have a dress or something, right? So that's kind of thing. It could, it could cause to misunderstanding. For example, uh, I, the first time I was, in, I was living in Singapore, Uh, they ask me in Indonesia. You will ask, "Where do you live?" Right? Anda tinggal di mana? In Malay language, they will see. They will ask you, "Where do you sit?" And I say, "Oh, I sit here." No, no. Where do you sit? Here. <laughs> like an hour ago, I've been sitting here. No, no. I think, "Where is your house?" Okay, so that's. But that's the sort. Some, some, some words may be different. Um, uh, some people actually ask, "Is is Bahasa Indonesia actually a dialect of uh, Bahasa Malay?" We can't call it a dialect. Well, there's a bit of a lot of, you know, fights and discussion among experts in languages uh, of the definition of dialects. But it's very difficult to call Indonesia a dialect of Malay, although some of them could be understandable. But a lot of words in Indonesia has already got a lot of mixes from the local languages, ethnic languages, the English, the Portuguese that the Malays don't have, and also the Dutch languages that they don't have the vocabulary. So. This has evolved a lot. It becomes another language on its own. I hope that answers your question. Okay, um, and we have two last questions uh, <laughs> from Clemens Gertler and Lucy Gertler from Germany. How come Islam is the primary religion when Indonesia was first colonized by Europeans? Yeah, good question. Um, <laughs> you Europeans. <laughs> Now, well, the thing is, it thing evolved. <laughs> Uh, at the time it was, uh, you know, first it was the Hindu for a very, very long time. And then the Buddhism came in with the flow and then the Christianity got on quite long as well. But unfortunately, uh, Christianity came with colonization. So that wasn't, uh, although a lot, of, uh, a lot of the religions were spread around Indonesia, uh, at the same time, uh, the one that freed the country from the European colonization were mostly um, the Muslims. They attacked the ports in Jakarta where the Portuguese uh, set, set down. And then Islam came at the time. Well, it's debatable, but it didn't come with colonization, with slavery. Instead, it releases slavery. It teaches people to uh, take shower and you know, be clean, to pray and things like that. So, and people are equal. I mean, this is thing are debatable, but at the end of the day, uh, it was the end of colonization and it was mostly partly by the Muslim at the time. So it got the sympathies from the people and it was quite easy as well with the, with the cleanliness and stuff. So that's how we were taught in the historical classes. Okay, and the last one is from Toyila Rogers Chan from Nigeria. How does Indonesia handle the large diversity and still move on to be the fastest growing economy in Southeast Asia? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it is very tough. But as I said earlier in my earlier presentation, we need those elements that combine, that, that unite people together. But since we grow up in day one, we were born, we were told the word tolerance, like it's like ringing on our ears from day one in school until whenever we are. In practice, it's not always the same because we have influence from our religions, you know, your ethnic, uh, ethnic uh, sensitivities, but whatever we have in school is about tolerance. And we have schools where many ethnics is there. So, uh, and then what the governments are doing, which I think it's quite good, is not trying to, luckily it's not trying to melt everything into one because we, we heard a lot about, let's say Singapore, They want to be like a melting pot. I don't think melting pot is the solution, right? You can't, you know, you have differences and you burn into one, then you don't let each of these elements live uh, on its own. That's why in Indonesia we call it integration. So integration means you let all these smaller elements live alongside each other with tolerance and the uniting elements. So the language is one, 
uh, the biggest elements that I didn't mention was the first, uh, our historical uh, feelings. Uh, because it was initially Indonesia wasn't never a country. It was very artificial. How could be, you know, different languages and things? There is no. But the only thing that was bind, that bound us together was this, um, the, the feeling wants to uh, get the independence from the Dutch colonization at the time. So all these islands came in together and form a unity because the, 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 they did the same way, like baby day at Empera, right? They, you know, divide and conquer. So all these kingdoms were all make, you know, they were made to fight each other and they will never be together. And one day they just come together and get rid of um, the colony, the colonization. So, so that's how, how, uh, how we can handle diversity. It's not easy. We have, you know, sometimes fights and wars and now we have one common enemy called terrorists. And when I tell to my European friends, we also have Muslim terrorists in Indonesia bombing places, bombing Muslims. So it's, it's a common threat. So we have these threats among us and we have the common threats everywhere. So it's not easy, um, but that's what makes Indonesia a very interesting place to live in. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much uh, for the answers and for the questions, of course. And then we are going to have a ice breaking for a moment. Um, let me let me invite my friend Wildan Adrianto. Where are you, Wildan? Wildan. Hi. Is yes. The spotlight. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so what are we so, going to do? <laughs> what? So we're doing um, ice breaking, guys. <clears throat> so please um, type on your phone www.kahoot.it and not, fill in. Not WKWK? <laughs> no, 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 it's different. It's different. And then fill the number to enter the game. Yeah, don't forget to write your name. Yeah, it, it has to be a real name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oi, 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 oi. Okay. Ha, we have ha. Okay. Ha. Not your yeah, neighbor's name. Yeah, I'm in already. Name. Okay, Mamun, good. Yeah, yeah, I can see your name. Really? <laughs> We're going to wait for Arizan. you. Arizan. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Come on, Arizan. Go, 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 Arizan. We're still here. Yeah, yeah. The, the pin is 85913352. Yep. Salam kenal juga. <laughs> okay, Julia is in. Can 
we start now? Wait, wait. We're waiting for the other participant. Oh yeah, yeah. Please help. What? It's still, it's still okay. many people and are trying. Have... Oh. Enter the pin. You go to www.kahoot.it and then insert the game pin. Then your name. Yeah. Then insert right. your name. Yeah, I got it. I can see a uh, bonus name there. Aruzan is in already. Congratulations! Willy, a eh, Willy. Will Dan. Will Dan, are you in? Already? I'm Willy, yep. yep. Yeah. Okay, guys, um, the ice breaking is. Um, before we, we have a breaking room, we have a breaking air, yeah, ice breaking. Okay, we're doing this ice breaking before we are entering a breakout room, which yep. in there we are going to practice Indonesian language Indonesian together. Yeah. This is going to be fun. Okay, let's count together. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's start. That's fine, that's fine, guys. Don't worry. Oh, <laughs> hey, how can we participate? How, how can we answer, answer that, sir? It is too late. Sir, we can uh, participate very well. We know the answer that comes to Indonesia. <laughs> I saw my name. <laughs> you cannot play now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, funny the Is Bali in Indonesia? Yes, of course. It's a tourist place. Oh, Clement. How oh, many islands one. are in Indonesia? Come on, guys. Which one of this is a form of transport in Indonesia? Beda motor, bermain, bercak, or what is that? Bapak. Okay, now I will handle this ice breaking. Let's go next. Okay, the first. The first point is Colin, I will see, and the second uh, is Elman, and the third is Imas. Okay, like the next step. Okay, come on. How many different languages are spoken in Indonesia? How many guys? Please answer. Come on. Okay, come on, come on, answer. Okay, 20 participants answer. Blue color. Okay, next. 
and the chart number one is Selman, and the second is Aki Oi Oi Oi. Okay, good job. Next, what is Legong? Okay, the, the good answer or the answer is a dance. Who is the first? Okay, the number one is still Selmans. Clement, sorry, Clements, and the second is Aki. Okay, next. What is a one? A small shop. Also, okay. Thirteen people answer a small shop. Good job. Next. Okay. Number one is Aki Oi oh, and the Aki second oi, is oi, oi, oi. Okay. Good job for Aki. We got some. Okay. Who is Next. Aki Oi Oi Oi? I shouldn't be playing, right? Sampai <laughs> oh, Aki. Sampai jumpa. Okay, next. Number one is Colin, the second is C, and the third is Clements. Okay, next. How we say sebelas in English? Okay, 29 answer. Okay, 19 participant answer. Uh, green color. Good. Who is number one? Phil Colin from Aussie. Okay. Oh, yeah. Give applause for Colin. Number one. Hey. Next. Mm, I am, am going Fried chicken, fried rice, ice cream, or chips. Ooh. Okay. 21, 21 answer fried chicken. Good. Next. Still calling from OC. Don't trust the image. <laughs> Come on. Don't trust the image. Okay. You can do it, Good. Julia. Julia, you can do it. Okay, next. Go, Still go, Julia. Go, Aussie. Julia. <laughs> go, Colin. And the second is C. The third is I. The fourth is Leila Karayeva. And the fifth is Satya. Okay, next. <laughs> Don't I cry, think, Julia. Julia. What is Pandavas? Eraser, pen, pencil case, or pencil? Please answer. Piggy, piggy. Okay, 14 participant answer, eraser. Good job. With the first is Colin, C, I, and Leila, and Jimbon. Oh, Jimbon. Good job for Jimbon. Next. Kamis. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Tuesday. Please, quickly. Answer is Thursday. Thanks. Wow. Number one is still Colin. Come on, Colin. Okay, August. What is August in Bahasa Indonesia? Yes, Augustus. Next. Cinema. Taman kota, pantai, bioskop, rumah. What is cinema? Okay, the good answer is bioskop. Next. Oh, Colin. Very good. And the next, mm -hmm. yesterday. Okay, the correct 
answer is kemarin. Next. Wow. Colin still number one. The second is I. The third is Leila Karayeva. And the fourth is Tessy. And the fifth is Jim Bond. Give applause for five participants. Okay, next. Sepeda, sepeda motor, beca, or kereta api. Sepeda. Good job. Still calling for Aussie. One, two, come. Gimana? Mau ikut? Asyik? Mau asyik? Mau asyik. Mau asyik. Mau ikut. Okay, next. Jam sembilan kurang seperempat. Okay, next one. Imas number two, and the third is Leila. Number four is Tessy, and number five is C. Don't give up, Kylie. Kylie, Kylie. Oh, thank you for playing. Okay. Okay, we give to the number one is Colin from Aussie, and the second is Imas, and the third is Leila Karayeva. Okay, congratulations. And for the next, we give to to MC. Right. Thank you for joining us in the ice breaking. Now we are going to go to our breakout room. Okay. Are you ready, uh, Mas Yogi? Okay. Really? Will I have you? Uh... Okay, okay, Mas Yogi, are you ready for the breakout room? Okay, guys. So the uh, in the back breakout room, we are going to practice Indonesian language with um, a tutor inside. Okay. We are waiting for the invitation for going to the breakout room. Okay. Please wait. And by the way, congrats for the winner of the game. I'm <laughs> sorry, I, I played the game also. <laughs> and I answered too fast. I could not join the games because it's very difficult to, how to say, in iPhone uh, for Zoom and at the same time playing. I was oh, not seeing any see. question on the screen. Oh, <laughs> Then I need I to see. I need to uh, move from Zoom to website, website to Zoom. So I lost the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's fine, Mamun. You can try again in the next. I'll give you a next game, icebreaking. Ice game. So prepare your cell phone separate or you can just like search. Uh, split your screen into two. Exactly. Yeah, that's English a good and idea. <laughs> okay. That's a good idea. Okay. You ready? Oh yeah. Teo, teo Yila. Can you can you please uh, teach me how to pronounce your name, please? Hello, but you don't say it right. Yes, you you said it right. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. So so you must repeat it again. Repeat it again. <laughs> okay, that's Chiyila. Chiyila. Chiy. Sorry. Chiyila. <laughs> Chiyila. Yes. Yes. Rogers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice to see you. That's a pleasure. Then, pleasure. Okay. You ready? Okay. Oh.
Kahoot kick you out, Aruzan? <laughs> same Why? like me. Same case like me. Because of time. Why? <laughs> Why? Oh, Kahoot is so rude. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Then, so are you ready to uh, practice Bahasa Indonesia to learn more about Bahasa Indonesia yeah, yeah. with your fellow tutor? Okay, now you can join the breakout room. Yeah, please click um, join yeah. and then we go to the breakout room. Halo Mas Yogi, saya salah room. Mas Yogi, Okay, everyone, you can just join the breakout room by clicking uh, the room that you're assigned to in your computer. We click about one in five way or four way there. Yeah, there's an option to join the breakout room on your screen. You can just join it. Okay. If you have any difficulties, don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, yes, I don't know. Oh, just click the breakout button, right? Yeah. Uh, do you find the options of joining breakout rooms in oh, yes. your screen? I used to, and I just click it. And when I see Ajima's message, then it, it is a mistake. So I just out of the breakout room. My breakout room is six. Is it right? Ah, okay, okay, 
Okay, we will assign you to the um, breakout room soon. Wait a second. You have to join this room or what? Since when you are using a girls? Hello? Hello? Yeah, Vicky? Can we help you? Yes, what we have to do now? What do we have to do now? Yeah. Um, yeah, Vicky. Uh, we are in the process of assigning uh, the participants to the group. So please wait for a few moments and then we will assign you to the breakout room. Okay? Okay, okay. thanks. You both are from Vietnam. Yeah. Hi. Okay, guys. Uh, Biki, you didn't have a chance to uh, enter the any breakout room, but uh, Kyle, Kyle, where are you? Have you been to the main room? The, the, here is the main room. Or Nicolo, Nicolo. I just got to the room and it just lasts for several minutes. It's not enough. Ah, for several minutes. Did you meet yeah. someone? Yeah, yeah, I meet the like the one who helped us with the Indonesia. Tasha. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. So did you uh, have a chance to practice your Indonesian or just to uh, greet someone in Indonesia in the breakout room? <laughs> Yeah, we miss some co-hosts and they said they send us um, material, but they cannot block. 
<laughs> yeah, they send ah. the material, but it still actually it did not uh, came to us. So they closed ah. the breakout room. So we are still waiting for next invitation for new breakout room. Um, um, maybe just because of the automatic. Actually, we have already assigned, but apparently Zoom uh, automatically just uh, put you in random breakout room. Oh wait, See. wait, wait. So sorry for the technical problem. No problem. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Uh... Perhaps uh, we can we can have some practice here. I mean, like, can you say uh, some like introduce introduce yourself? I mean, like, hello, selamat sore. Nama saya Imas. Nama kamu yeah. siapa? Just like that. Can we try? Yeah. Spotlight, spotlight. I need you, spotlight. Yes, yes. Please, please. <laughs> I need okay, you, Ima, spotlight. Imas, you have to use spotlight first, then we will try. <laughs> okay, Imas, spotlight. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm so ready. Oh. Wait, no, wait. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we're going to practice like a little bit, like um, to introduce yourself. Halo, selamat sore. Nama saya Imas. Saya berasal dari Indonesia. Okay, next spotlight. Please do your magic spotlight. Spotlight. Spotlight goes to. Right, I'm going to type it here. Please. Oh, Biki. <laughs> Don't 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 panic. Can you <laughs> can you write in the chat box? Actually, I you you were speaking so fast I couldn't get it. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay. I'm working on it. So you should see on the chat. I share the the oh, first yeah. material that you guys should be doing in the breakout room, but I think it's probably good to do it now in the main room. So just an introduction of yourself. So maybe it's a good idea to introduce everyone in the room, right? Because mm. you probably don't know each other. And if you see there in the file, uh, if you open it, there is, you say, Selamat siang, nama saya, your name, and then saya berasal dari a country, saya mahasiswa di, and you have the university name. And then last one, you can say hobby saya, you can say in English perhaps. Let's say hobby saya football. <laughs> Fine. Uh, one day you will you will learn the uh, the vocabulary in Bahasa. It's fine. How's that sound? Is that okay, Panitia? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Mas. Oh, yeah. You guys see the files on, on the chat room? You yeah, can yeah. that one. I can use that that format. Yeah. Go ahead. Who's next? Rudy. Go ahead, Rudy. Oh, I like your background. Okay, uh, go ahead. <laughs> I, uh, I will introduce uh, myself in Indonesian. Yeah. Oh. You, you have the file format? Yeah. Uh, selamat. Uh, selamat sore. Uh, nama Indonesia. Saya Rudy. Um, uh, saya dari uh, Ho Chi Minh City, uh, Vietnam. Um, Umu saya, umu saya, uh, 28, uh, 24, 24 tahun. Uh, uh, saya uh, maha, maha siswa di uh, um, Boston. Uh, and uh, uh, hobby, hobby saya, hobby saya menonton bola, uh, bola Bahasa Indonesia, senang belan belan malam dengan anda. That's all. Yay! That's really good. Terima kasih. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to give a clap emoji. <laughs> next spotlight. Okay, next spotlight. Oh, oh, oh Kyle. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, like, hello, nama saya Kylie. 
Sayadari, Hanoi, Vietnam. Uh, Yumu, Yumu Saya, is that right? Yumu Saya? Umur. Saya. Umur. Umur. Yeah. Yeah, Umur. Umu Saya, 19. What is 19? 19. 19. 19. 19. Wait, wait, that's way too difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> like ta slowly. 19 Tahun, uh, Anda. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, well done. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Guys, the, the format is in the file I send you in the chat room. So you can you can follow that one. It's easier. Uh, in that one, I, I remove the umur because <laughs> it's difficult. Uh, Terima kasih, Mas Aki. Okay. Can we have like, okay. Oh, Colin. hello there, oh. Colin. <laughs> Colin, Colin, our winner. Okay, I have to look at the document. I've downloaded it, so I'm just going to look at it. <laughs> okay, so Salamat Siang, Nama Saya Colin, Saya Barasal Dari Australia, Saya Maha Siswa Di um, Universitas New England, Hobby Saya non-ton film. Good. Wow, that's so good. Wow, wow. terima kasih, Colleen. Spotlight lagi, eh, lagi, again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> the sad boy. <laughs> Hi, Nicole. Hello, sad boy. <laughs> okay, hello. Just Hello. A moment, just a moment. Hello. Uh, okay, I have to introduce myself in uh, in Indonesian language. Yep. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. What's the strategy? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Hello. Nama saya Nicolo. Saya dari Italia. Umur saya. Uh, I don't know how to say 20 here. Uh, 20 20. Uh, uh, tahum, um, uh, hobby saya cinema, films. Uh, mm. What? Me non ton. Me non ton. Me non ton. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, sen, um, senang. Uh, Berkalan, uh, oh my god, uh, it's difficult <laughs> for me. Uh, yeah, it's a little difficult for me. Oh my god, uh, it's the first time. Um, okay, uh, okay, Senang, uh, uh, I try to read, I try, I, I try to read it a little bit. Uh, Senang Berka, uh, Berkana, 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 Whoa, yeah. very good, Nicolo. Next spotlight, or we're done? Next spotlight, or? That's spotlight. Maybe for oh. girls. Oh. oh. Hi, hi everyone. I'll try to oh. think, um, to have introductions in uh, Indonesia, Indonesian. Um, Selamat sore. Selamat sore. Uh, selamat sore. Nama saya Julia. Saya berasal dari Vietnam. Saya mahasiswa di University of Vietnam University. Hobi saya berana. Terima kasih, Julia. Terima kasih, Julia. Thank you so much. Hello? Next. Let's go. Next. Hello? Next. Hello? Oh, yeah. iPhone. I love your costume. I love your costume. Perfect. 
Selamat siang. Uh, nama saya Yvonne. Saya, uh, saya dari Nigeria. Umur saya 24 tahun. Um, my uh, hobby saya yoga and non film. Saya mahasiswa, saya mahasiswa di Universitas Mexico. Terima kasih. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Terima kasih. Hello. Okay. No, can I try? Oh yeah. Who is that? Who wants to try just now? Me. Who, 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 please say your name. Mickey? Hello? Okay, Mickey. Let me try. Yeah, sure. Selamat siang. Nama saya Mickey. Saya berasal dari Nepal. Saya mahis siswa di BP Coral Institute of Health Sciences. Habis saya membaca jogging, not on film. Business. Terima kasih, Biki. Very good. Thank you, Biki. Very good. Okay. Kaziza, please. Hello, uh, selamat sore. Hi. Nama saya Kazusa. Saya berasal dari uh, saya mahasiswa di Universitas Saga. Hobi saya membaca. Uh, Senam perkenalan dengan Anda. Hey. Hello, I would love to try. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Uh, selamat sore. Nama saya Rojas. Saya berasai di Nigeria. Saya mahasiswa. Universities in Nigeria. Hobby saya me non ton film. So good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for trying to introduce yourself in. Indonesian. Then please uh, read our group chat. There is uh, information there. Okay. You can uh, you can fill fill the G form right now, perhaps. Yes. We're going to give you three minutes. Okay. Okay, while you are all uh, filling in the form from the workshop of our today's workshop, as probably we are running out of time, I think time is up already basically. So later I will update you in the group, WhatsApp group about your post activity later. So you're going to, to have a project to make a video with Bahasa Indonesia. So you can use uh, all the materials and you can ask us. We are also available if you have any questions or ideas in the group to do your post a, a workshop activity. Basically, you have to make a video of maximum of five minutes practicing your Indonesia or talking about Indonesia 
and really little about Indonesia uh, as a vlog. Hello, please. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, fill up the form, but actually the website is not working. It's loading and loading and loading. Ah, okay. Uh, I think just... I think same same problem facing by other people also. Ah, okay. Wait, wait, wait. So I think Thank later you, you can notice. send us a link. We can we can yeah. we can fill up the form even after the uh, workshop. Yeah, even after the workshop. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's good. We have also uh, we have already sent the link uh, in the in what WhatsApp group. Yeah, so okay, you can probably just you. like uh, access it from there. Okay. Okay. So basically, you are going to do a, a vlog as your post activity, and then your video will be uh, considered as our competition material. So you have a chance to win some uh, prizes, fresh money. But you need to do, uh, you need to probably just like fulfill and make the video of vlog. And about the details, I will update you in WhatsApp group later What's regarding the our there's this first workshop. What's the grand prize, Naban? Ah, the grand prize, uh, the first winner will receive around $200 if you make it. Uh, I mean, like if you submit it within under one year of your name, then you will receive it like fully $200. But if you do it, uh, I mean, like in group within the same, I mean, like in this group, uh, probably you will uh, make a video with one of your friends, new friends here, then I'm afraid that you need to divide the price <laughs> like yeah, with, within your group. Then I think nobody will do with people. <laughs> Everyone so better, will do like singly. You, you may you may also like just like uh, later about the details. You may uh, you may ask your family or friends uh, to practice your Indonesia or probably the theme is like about Indonesia culture and language. Whether you want to make uh, like you want to play a teacher and students probably your sisters or brothers your little brothers or sisters uh, are going to be your students and you play or act as an English teacher uh, or Indonesian teacher sorry uh, that will do as well for, uh, for an, as an example to make a vlog uh, related to Indonesian culture and language maximum of the video is five minutes about the written detail I will update it in the whatsapp group about our post activity, post workshop activity for Indonesia 101. So automatically, uh, after completing your, I mean, uh, vlog, you will also receive like full complete of your certificate later on, and also have the chance to win uh, the prizes. The best uh, video, the best project for the best project. And for uh, to I mean like the upcoming uh, workshops, uh, there will be like four workshops. There will also there will be also uh, post workshop activity, except the uh, culinary. The culinary will be uh, you have already done actually with the pre workshop activity by uh, preparing the ingredients all and yeah all the preparations. So you don't have to do any post workshop activity but for Indonesia 101 and tourism and also dance and also music later on. So you may just like focus on one probably just to get the best It's up to you. But at least like you have the chance to win uh, the prizes apart from the competitions, but automatically your project will be considered as the competitions. Any questions before? We end this uh, today's session, today's workshop. I think also mm -hmm. we are, yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, you said Who's this that? vlog is the part of the competition, right? Yes. Uh, is it Tien um, Hafam from Vietnam? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Um, mm, I saw the rule on the uh, the website is that mm -hmm. um, when uh, once competition um into uh, once um so um 
uh, on my plan. I'm ready to uh, uh, come prepare for um, once the once of the competition. Yeah. Um, ah, okay. So um, I'm, I'm I'm just I I read the rule and they said um, once competition um, just for once uh, yeah right competition for just one competition right. Ah, so okay. but that's for the general rule of the competition but for the workshop participants that will be like uh -huh. different because we'll be we separate the prizes for the competition for i mean like for the best project for the post activity for workshop participants so, um so this is the uh, a condition to get the certified right uh, yeah 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 mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah i understand thank you thank you hello but uh tin Tin uh, Hafam, you may also still uh, join the competition, the real competition, apart from the apart from the post workshop activity. So you you have more chances to win the prizes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello. 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 There's a question in the chat room, Naban. Will the grouping for the competition be done on our behalf or we form the groups ourselves? Okay, for the... Will, will grouping for the competition be done on our... Yes, you can do, uh, you can choose by yourself, be done for your behalf. So you may just like uh, find, in, you, may, you may discuss and find uh, someone to make the group. It's up to you. Um, hi, I had a question. Yes, Nishma. Oh, uh, I was I was filling up the form, so I guess I missed bits and pieces of what you were saying about the uh, competition. Uh, is it possible for you to just uh, repeat it in brief once again? Ah, uh, okay. Basic, basically, like the competition will be like separately, but especially for the workshop participant, there will be like post workshop activity that will be considered as uh, the competition. But will be, uh, I mean, the, there will be like special prizes uh, as the best project, though it is considered as the competition. So you have the chance uh, of winning uh, prizes by doing the best project of this post workshop activity. Got it? I will update every details uh, like the pre-workshop for the culinary on WhatsApp later today. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I saw someone is raising her hand. Could you please turn on your microphone? My Hello? attendance link is not working. Oh yeah. My attendance link is not working. A link. Ah, okay. The link is not working. Okay, you may probably just like try later. Uh, we have already updated. We have already sent it in the WhatsApp group. So don't worry. You may you may fill it out later. Thank you. You may do it later. Thank you. And also one question from Julia. I think, can I form a group with an Indonesian friend for practicing? Yeah, it's okay. But... For the post activity. You may just like choose it like in the, you may find it in the group. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, is that all? And uh, do you have? Okay, uh, Mr. Naban, do you have something? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Say? We haven't done any before before we leave because I think that every one of you uh, have some business to do. I think please just turn on the camera so we are going to have a group uh, screenshot and photo. First, 
Yay! This is the best part. <laughs> okay, anyone, everyone, please. Everyone is ready? Yeah. Yes. Ready? Okay. Cheese, wait. Cheese. Cheese, first page. And second page, cheese. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Vincent, you missed right. the chance. I okay, think we can time. end this session of workshop, right? Okay. I do okay. not forget tomorrow. I, I think I, did, I will give uh, back to Imas. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for attending this first session of workshop. Thank you very much for Mr. Ahmad Bayhaki for giving us fruitful insights on today's workshop. And thank you very much for all the participants. Uh, we hope you have a very good time with us and hope to see you again in the next workshops. Stay Yay. safe, healthy, happy, pretty. Thank you. Sampai jumpa. Sampai jumpa. Sampai besok. Sampai jumpa. Sampai jumpa. Thank you. Stay safe. Sampai besok. Music please. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah, that's for tomorrow's uh, session with the tourism. And we will we will send you the new link for the rest of the workshops. Imas. Yeah. Yeah, sebelum selesai boleh saya tanya sebentar lagi. Yeah. Yeah. Jadinya selain lomba-lombanya di di online kan kita masih dalam lomba dari workshop ini yang bikin vlog kan. Aku aku live ya kan. Bisa minta tolong diulang lagi? Iya. Selain lombanya dan lomba short video, tulis essay dan menyanyi gitu. Dari workshopnya kita ada yang lomba yang lain. Tadinya nap nap hanya bilang kan. Jadinya kita bisa ikutnya dua lomba gitu. Ya, ya bisa. Seperti jadi, mm -hmm. jadi, jadinya saya bikin satu video, tapi kirimnya dua lomba seperti itu. Um, ya bisa bisa. Bisa juga ya. Bisa oh. tapi uh, akan lebih baik kalau namanya siapa? Diki ya. Siapa? Diki, Diki. Diki bisa bisa juga kalau Diki membuat video yang lain jadi uh, kesempatan menangnya lebih besar karena lebih menarik di oh, mata gitu. juri begitu ya benar sekali. Oh jadi jadi jadinya emangnya kita masih ikut yang lomba dari dari acara biasa selain ya, itu yang ikutnya dari workshop juga jadinya bikin dua video ikutnya ya, dua ya, lomba. Ya. Gitu. Dua video akan lebih baik. Oke okay, Diki. Oke, okay, makasih ya. Nuhun. Sama-sama Diki. Nanti kalau ada yang mau ditanyakan bisa ditanya di grup ya. Ya, siap-siap. Terima kasih Diki. Ya. Nuhun. Itu Diki bisa bahasa Indonesia. Bisa Mas Naban suaranya masuk. Oh, ya, bisa. <laughs>